Thank you, Dr. Pooja. Uh, it's, uh, it has been a long association with you since our GB Pan days. And uh, I would like to thank Professor Sareen and Dr. Ashok for inviting me here. So I would be presenting on pitfalls uh, and way forward in HCC staging. So there have been various HCC staging uh, for last couple of decades, uh, starting with Okuda staging, staging, clip staging, then came BCLC, and then many more. And of them, <coughs> BCLC has been, uh, staging has been used most extensively. BCLC staging was developed by uh, uh, Professor Jordi Broy and his group. And the first BCLC staging came in 1999, and which was uh, slightly different from what we use today. And in that initial BCLC staging, as you can see, stage A was divided into four groups. And then the main modality of treatment used to be uh, surgical resection. And uh, subsequently, the next uh, addition of BCLC staging came in 2002, where we can see that familiar algorithm where stage is given uh, on the top and then uh, treatment modalities are given below and they divided into stage A to C as those who would be given some certain uh, form of treatment and stage D where only palliative or symptomatic treatment would be given. Subsequently in 2010 the third edition of BCLC staging came where a new stage uh, that was introduced was stage 0 which was very early tumor stage and uh, where again they recommended resection and also that was the time when the first drug which was successful that came that is sorafenib and they introduced sorafenib into the treatment algorithm <coughs> and subsequently um, in 2012 the next uh, addition of BCLC staging came where they introduced ablation also as a form of treatment for the early uh, cancer and they also instead of saying sorafenib as the treatment modality this because by that time many more drugs had come so they started saying that systemic therapy for advanced stage stage C and they also introduced the concept of I mean uh, prognosis or uh, the survival in that algorithm the latest addition of BCLC staging came in 20, 2022 where the one change that they have done that they have subdivided the intermediate stage into three groups and they also introduce a long line of drugs which would be given as systemic therapy uh, from first line, second line and third line. So there are many advantages of BCLC staging that is why we use it so often. It is the most commonly used HCC staging system all over the world. It is adopted by EASL, ASLD and many other societies. And the beauty of BCLC staging is that it incorporates tumor status, liver status, that means child's or liver function, and as well as performance status, that means how active the patient is. The treatment, <coughs> sorry, the treatment options are also incorporated in the uh, staging itself. So by just one figure, you can figure out uh, what is the stage and what treatment he should uh, be given. And most clinical trials uh, on HCC now use BCLC staging. But there are certain shortcomings of the BCLC staging. Uh, there is one of the most important shortcomings which has come up recently is that uh, we are now using combination treatment more and more. But as you can see the BCLC algorithm, there is no mention of co combination treatment. Now we often use taste plus systemic therapy, ablation for plus systemic therapy, taste plus SBRT but all these combination treatment are not there. Second shortcoming is that tear is missing from the algorithm. As you can see uh, they have mentioned taste for the uh, intermediate stage uh, tumors but tear is missing. But uh, we have seen that tear is a very good modality and patients do benefit from tear. Then down staging is not incorporated in the algorithm. So we have the BCLC do, does recommend transplant but it does not say when to downstage before transplant or uh, should the patient be taken up directly. And again, BCLC is not very much suited for the LDLT uh, setting. The next shortcoming is that 
stage C patients, all patients are clubbed together. So if the patient has portal vein tumor thrombosis or it ha he has extra hepatic metastasis, they all are clubbed together in a single uh, group that is advanced stage and for which systemic treatment is advised. And the stage D or BCLC D patients who have small tumor but decompensated chronic liver disease, they have not given the liver transplant option. And we all know that patients who have a small tumor but decompensated cirrhosis, they would definitely benefit from liver transplantation. Again, uh, SBRT, radiotherapy has come up recently uh, as a very good treatment modality which is uh, uh, often used for portal vein tumor thrombosis and even small tumors as alternative to taste. It is not mentioned in the BCLC algorithm. And the liver function assessment, as you can see in the BCLC, they have, uh, they, are, they have recommended that you can use either LB score or child put score or MELD score. So this introduces a lot of heterogeneity. Some centers would be using MELD score, some will be uh, using uh, child pick score. So when we are uh, doing trials on, on that, then there will be a lot of heterogeneity and they would not be comparable. So, uh, Inacel has come up with certain modification of BCLC staging which I'll be presenting. This is the Inacel modification of BCLC. Uh, Inacel, as uh, you must be knowing, is the Indian National Association for Study of the Liver. So, HCC guidelines, uh, uh, as you know, EZL and ASLD have been publishing. The Inacel published its first HCC guidelines in 2014. Subsequently, its second edition came in 2019, and we recently pre published the third edition of Inacel uh, HCC guidelines, uh, which has, uh, for which the meeting was done in Puri uh, in 2022, and these guidelines have, were published uh, just uh, in August. Uh, 2023 and would sh uh, shortly be uh, available in the PubMed also. So what we have changed in the Inacel guidelines as per the for the staging. So as you can see that in the BCLC staging system there is no mention of liver transplant criteria. They may do mention that single tumor less than 3 centimeter or multiple tumor less, uh, all less than 3 centimeter which essential means uh, Milan criteria but they do not mention it explicitly and they also do not mention other uh, expanded criteria. In Inacel BCLC staging we have clearly said that stage A, Inacel BCLC stage A are those patients who are fit, who are within the Milan criteria and all those patients who fit into extended criteria, for example UCSF criteria, Kyoto criteria would be graded as in, uh, Inacel BCLC stage B1. So, and when should we do downstaging? Again, BCLC does not say when we should do it, but in the Inacel BCLC staging system, we say that if the patient fits into Milan criteria, he can be taken up for upfront liver transplantation. If he uh, fits into UCSF criteria, again, he can be taken up for upfront liver transplantation. But if the patient fits into any criteria, liver transplant criteria, which is beyond UCSF, then it should be preferable that we first downstage these patients before taking him for transplantation. And if liver transplantation is not available, we again say that these patients would then benefit from taste and tear. And there's been a definite role of downstaging. Uh, many uh, studies all over the world have shown that with downstaging, the survival and outcome becomes as good as the patient who fits into the uh, Milan criteria or UCSF criteria. Even this study, which is from India, they have uh, from the Prashant Bangui and Dr. Soyens group, they have shown that down, with downstaging, uh, the patients can benefit and their survival is much better. And when should we do tear? Again, we, I, as I mentioned that in BCLC staging, tear is not at all mentioned. But in Inacel BCLC staging, we have said that in the stage B2, uh, the you, if the patient is uh, eligible for taste, he can also be taken up for tear, although the cost would be high. But many studies have shown that the with tear, the response is better. And also, in uh, there's another stage that is stage B3, where he cannot be taste because this is a stage where the tumor is diffuse and infiltrative. So it is a, not a nodular tumor. So here the tear would be much more beneficial. 
and also uh, many studies have shown that TAS versus TAIR, the survival is better with TAIR. And what about BCLC stage C? Uh, they have clubbed into one group, but in, in acyl BCLC staging, we have said that patients who have portal vein invasion but no extrahepatic stage, uh, extrahepatic spread should be labeled as stage C1. And these patients uh, do benefit from uh, tear as well as SBRT and in selective uh, patients even resection can be done. So this modality uh, was missing from the BCLC staging. And stage C2 are those patients who have extrahepatic spread and obviously for them systemic therapy is the best treatment. So we have subdivided stage C into two groups, uh, stage C1 in whom local regional therapy in form of tear can be given and followed by systemic therapy. And what about liver transplantation in stage D patient, BCLC D? In the BCLC staging, uh, these patients, uh, they mentioned that only best supportive care should be given. So these uh, patients, uh, the prognosis is doomed. But in inacyl BCLC staging, we have clearly divided them into D1 and D2. D1 are those patients who whose tumor is within the transplant criteria, UCSF criteria, that means their tumor burden is small, but they have decompensated cirrhosis and performance status is less than two. These patients would definitely merit from liver transplantation. But if the performance status is high or if their tumor uh, uh, burden is beyond any transplant criteria, then uh, these patients would be stage D2 and they would merit only best supportive care. So we, again, uh, the prognosis in D1 would be definitely better than D2. And many studies have shown, just I'll take one more minute. Many studies have shown that transplantation in decompensated CLD with small tumors is much better. What about combination therapy? Many studies have come up with the combination therapy, for example, local regional therapy plus immunotherapy. So combination therapy in form of adjuvant or new adjuvant uh, systemic therapy uh, has been uh, used many times. And uh, so we have incorporated co combination therapy in our BCLC staging. Uh, the slides are not moving. Yeah, so in the BCLC staging, we have said then uh, in acyl BCLC staging in stage B or C, after giving local regional therapy, there's a, we can offer them systemic therapy and they would have uh, better response and better overall survival. Again, role of uh, SBRT, now many studies have come up which have shown that with uh, it, uh, SBRT achieves good local control and over our survival uh, in the tune of 84 to 90 percent. And we have incorporated, as we are given the option of SBRT in patients who have uh, either C1, that means portal vein tumor invasion, or even uh, as an adjuvant therapy to taste and tear if they have a small tumor burden. Uh, so, the inacyl BCLC staging uh, system is a significant improvement over the existing updated BCLC staging system and all modifications in the inacyl BCLC staging system are evidence based and it is suitable for both the LDLT as well as DDLT setting and I urge all of you to use inacyl BCLC staging for your research as well as your decision making uh, purpose. So I would uh, encourage all of you to click a picture of this uh, inacyl BCLC staging system which is there so that it remains in your mobile and you can use it as often. Also, if you can uh, scan this QR code, the, you can download the entire uh, uh, the latest PURI 3 or Inacel guidelines uh, from the website. Thank you for your patient hearing.